13-year-old lad disappears after visiting his father's home on Saturday. Police Corporal Fingered in Saka's murder turns himself in. All sugar estates likely to remain in operation until 2018. And rogue cops in a GPF will not be tolerated reaffirms the acting top cop. Those were the top headlines for the week ending November 17. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good afternoon. Starting things off on MTV's News Updates Weekend Review, we tell you that on Monday, November 13, Nickel John Doe reported that the acting crime chief Paul Williams declared that justice will prevail in the case of Cassia Branch. Acting crime chief Paul Williams has confirmed that nine statements have been taken following the death of Cassia Branch on Tuesday, November 7. He stated that two police officers and the father of Branch's child are still in custody. Williams says they have sought extension from the High Court to keep the three in custody over the 72 period. Three persons we brought into custody and those three, three persons are still there. Okay. Our child father and the two policemen. How many persons altogether have been questioned? Well, so far, what I know, I think we would have had like about nine statements. About nine statements. Based on the direction of the investigation, the crime chief believes the case will be cracked. He noted that video evidence was obtained from sources. However, those sources cannot be disclosed. In the line of questions and in the line of my training and experience, I'm seeing the type of information that I want forthcoming and they're authentic. Cassia Branch went out to a city club on the night of Saturday, November 4. However, her body was found on the roadway at Louisa Row and Princess Street the following day. She was taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital where she remained unconscious until her death on the morning of Tuesday, November 7, 2017. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Cases of sexual offences are expected to be handled in a better manner as the guidelines for dealing with such cases in the Carbon region has been launched in Guyana. The guidelines provide protection for witnesses. Here's more. Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary, Justice Janet Cummings Edwards, said those fearful to testify against sexual offenders will be in a better position to do so by way of the guidelines for sexual offence cases. The guidelines will see the protection of their privacy and after support services. Justice Cummings Edwards stated that the comprehensive document will see the strengthening of guidance and management of sexual offence cases. We know that sexual violence in the Caribbean is a big problem. We know too that there is underreporting of many cases involving sexual assaults. And for those few cases that have been reported, the complaint is, and justifiably so, that they have not been handled very well at times, be it at the investigative stage, the trial stage, or the response stage, or even after, after, after the, the adjudication of the matter. Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali said her ministry is committed to implement policies to respond to the cries for justice by those who suffered heinous crimes. That seeks to hold several categories of practitioners, professionals accountable and improve the quality of care and service being provided to victims and survivors of sexual violence. The report emanated as high levels of sexual violence are often unreported and ineffectively dealt with by the justice system in the region. Over a 15-month period, about 200 persons, including survivors of sexual abuse, stakeholders, and a judiciary, were able to infuse their input in the model guidelines. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Youth Stars Association is urging President David Granger to rethink his action in enforcing a restriction on the importation of youth stars in Guyana. This is not the first time the association is pleading with the government to reverse the decision to no avail. The Shanagom Skrillinus with the details. The restriction on the importation of used tires in Guyana commenced on April 1, 2017. This was made possible after the government amended the Customs Act, 
following the planned restriction in the 2017 national budget. Since then, stakeholders, especially the Guyana Used Tires Association, have been calling on the government to lift this restriction they termed as burdensome. Despite many protests, the government has been unmoved. Regardless, the president of the association, Mustaq Mohammed, is again making a valiant plea to the president to lift the restriction to allow used tires dealers to remain in operation. In his quest, Mohammed lamented that a restriction continues to have a negative impact on the layman's pocket. And the government should think about the poor people in this country. The poor people can't buy new tires. You see, the government not going to buy them tires, this, you know. And all of them when you see the inside as minister, used to use used tire because me sell more than one and more than two of them used tire and me tire shop. But now, because they're a government, they're a minister, taxpayer money have to buy tire for them so they can say put down for a new tire. But the poor man can't call me who put down one new tire. Me not ask nobody else but the president himself. Me ask the president himself to look into this matter about the used tire for 2018 budget if they can uplift the restriction. Meanwhile, when contacted for a comment on the issue, Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin related that it is the administration's policy for the restriction to remain. Minister Gaskin asserted while the cost for an imported used tire might be feasible for the consumer, based on findings it would be applicable to import more reliable new tires, from recognizable manufacturers. What I told him and, and the executive of the association is exactly what I told you, which is that this is a government policy. And um, it's a policy that I support. As Minister of Business, I support the, the, that government, that particular government policy. If some member of government decides for some reason that they want to put it back on the table for a review and they bring the matter to cabinet, then it, 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 it gets discussed. That, that, that's how things work. So anybody can decide, well, they, they, they're not comfortable with this policy. They want to, to be revised or reviewed. And if enough persons feel that that is reasonable or that that needs to happen, then it's possible. You know, so it, 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 and it's an environmental concern because if you have to import more tires so, so that there's more, you know, these tires have to be disposed of. How are we disposing of, of, of these tires currently? Um, we burning them, we throwing them away. Um, well, what's the system in place for the disposal of these tires? Reporting for MTV News Update, Lushona Gomes, Cornelius. President David Granger led the replaying ceremony on Sunday morning at the Cenotaph to honor the men and women who served in the two world wars. Nicole John with the details. Heads of the discipline services and the diplomatic corps also laid the wreaths in the remembrance of those soldiers' contribution. Following the replaying ceremony at the Cenotaph, the former service men and women converge at the Guyana Veterans Legion on Carrifesta Avenue. President of the Union, retired Lieutenant Colonel George Gomes said, there were 20 surviving veterans of World War II in 2016. However, six of those individuals died during the course of the year. Gomes also mentioned that an additional two World War veterans were found living in Guyana bringing a total of 16 survivors. You are the gentlemen who stepped forward and were prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice in service of king and country at that time. The Legion's president noted that there are 85 veterans who suffer from serious disabilities. He noted that with the recent National Veterans Commission of Inquiry, the recommendations made can somehow be implemented to better improve the treatment and care of the veterans. We believe that our veterans stand to benefit from its recommendations and we eagerly await to learn more. President David Granger, on behalf of the government, handed over a check of $1 million to the Guyana Veterans Legion. 
He noted that the two great world wars opened the gate for independence from their colonial empires, while noting that many men and women from the Caribbean risked their lives fighting for their country. But it was the collapse of the British Empire, or the weakening of the British Empire during the Second World War, which contributed to the fact that we are independent today. So in a way, war wasn't all that bad. Heads of the disciplined services and former military servicemen also pledged financial support to the Ghana Veterans Legion. On Friday, a Remembrance Day ceremony will be held for veterans at Camp Aingan Thomas Lands. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. On a sad note, a mother of six is now grieving after her 13-year-old son has not been seen or heard from in three days. According to the aggrieved mother, her son visited his father's house at Friendship East Bank de Marara on Saturday last and was never seen again. Nishana Gomes Cornelis with this report. According to Roxanne Benjamin, her teenage son Aaron Roberts on the morning of Saturday, November 11, went to lessons as normal. After lessons, the lad visited his father's residence at Friendship, East Bank, Demerara. However, he was never seen again. While acknowledging that it is not the first time her son failed to return home, Benjamin believes this time that something sinister has happened. The mother of the missing youth claimed she had a matter reported to the police and had even made contact with the child's father, but nothing positive has surfaced concerning her son's whereabouts. Nonetheless, Benjamin is hopeful that her son, Aaron, who is a student of South Rumveld Secondary, will return home. So, after having seen him on Saturday night, and then I said maybe he would come back Sunday morning. Sunday morning, he did not return. So I said maybe he might have come early Monday morning for school, right? So when I saw the thing is so strange that he's not at home. So I told one of my sister to call the father because the father and the sister has a relationship, a communication. So when the sister called the father now, the, the, the relative there, the father who ever talked to her, they said that he went there on Sunday afternoon pick up his clothes, and that's all they know about him. So I'm here today to appeal to Aaron wherever he is. He has no beef with anybody at home. Nobody don't treat him bad. Maybe he wants his home, and that's very bad. So I'm appealing as a mother that he must come home because education makes a nation. I'm just appealing to him as a mother to come home. As it concerns the welfare of her son and other children who may be in a similar situation, lost, missing or held against their will, Benjamin is urging all members of the public to be gatekeepers of children in society. Well, my message to the public out there is that there are so, much, so many children out there that need their parents and the public out there should let, let, let it look out, look out for people's children too. Not only their own children. And if they see people going astray, let them, let them, let them say what it is. Let them call somebody or known the police station to say, well, you know, I've seen two boy or three boy and, you know, going to a place and we are concerned. The concerned mother of six is pleading for her son's safe return and is also asking anyone who may have knowledge of her son's whereabouts. The Ghana Power and Light Company is looking to have a natural gas generation system for the country. However, the notion of having such a system in place was criticized by Leader of Opposition, Bharat Chagliu. Nikhil Jonu filed this report. Opposition Leader Bharat Chagliu has expressed concerns that the Ghana Power and Light Company still has a daunting challenge to provide a reliable supply of power. Chagliu said during his party's tenure in office, they would have established areas where GPL needed to be improved on to serve their customers better. The opposition leader noted that the electricity company is advertising for the installation of 50 megawatts capacity natural gas fired power plant in Damarara. Jagdio claims that a feasibility study has not been conducted on natural gas and its efficacy in the generation of electricity. This government has pledged to the international community to have 100% of its energy come from renewable sources by 2025. This is the contrary to that pledge, another broken promise. 
The opposition leader questions the relevance of having natural gas if it materializes in 2020 and how it will solve blackouts. He claims that the government will be including an additional 25,000 households on the national power grid. However, the current generating capacity to have a constant power supply is under stress. The opposition leader further claims that the government has collected over $20 billion in just two and a half years in revenues from electricity bills. You know, the flippant answers from Patterson and from Badal, but they will never confirm how much they collected because they did not adjust the price of electricity downwards um, when the oil prices fell. So we know we can't excuse them anymore. We have to get the numbers. They're flush with money now. According to Jack Deal, the government has no immediate plan to fix the power supply for its citizens. The opposition leader added that the coalition government did not follow through with the proposed Amila Falls hydropower project. I want to assure you that this is not off the books that this is one of the first acts that we will do. We will have to restart this project in the future. And, and we will have to retend, of course, because the bids have all become very old. And, but we will find a partner. We will retend the project. And we will have the hydropower built in Guyana. And that will save people on their electricity bill would save the country tons of foreign currency. It will meet our green targets and it would be sustainable. Because with gas, we don't know what will happen 10 years down the line. Not only have the opposition party, but also the private sector commission bashed the government for the inadequate and unreliable supply of electricity. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Heavily tended vehicles, including minibuses, are driving around in plain view of traffic ranks. However, Traffic Chief Dion Moore assures that the regulation has not changed and the police will be cracking down on more tinted vehicles. Traffic Chief Dion Moore said the tint law has not been relaxed. He noted that a total of 1,376 drivers have been charged thus far for the year for illegal tint. For last year, 1,039 drivers were charged for the offense of having their vehicles tinted. The traffic chief said the force has done some house cleaning by removing the dark plastic from 63 vehicles owned by members of the force. Not only have we looked at tint on private vehicles, we have looked internally as well, and 63 police drivers who have their own private vehicles, tint were removed, and 19 from police-owned vehicles as well. Moore added that many minibus drivers have been tinting their vehicles heavily. The traffic chief cited one example where a Kitty Camberville minibus driver had a heavily tinted vehicle. That man has been charged and placed before the court. James McKenzie called, I think, big news. He was on two occasions taken into custody. On the first occasion, his tint was removed. He was found at a stationary uh, point where we recognized that he had tints on his vehicle coupled with uh, an installed rectangular light, which was not approved with regards to fitness. He was warned on that occasion, and within days, he was seen again. However, during that period, I was away, but as soon as I returned, I recognized the media has been helpful to us, and they, upon seeing him, throw it up again, we recognize it, and he has been charged. His matter is presently before the court. He was charged with two offenses. He pleaded guilty to one, and one is still before the court. Moore added that most vehicles which enter Guyana have been registering at the Guyana Revenue Authority with dark windows, not tinted ones. He added that those drivers are required 
to have a waiver from the GRA to operate until the clear windows are purchased. There are a lot of minibuses that are being imported and are being registered with those dark glasses with the view of them importing the clear glass within a short period. Sometimes some are given three months, some are given six months. And then four to three months or four to six months as well. However, the owners or drivers of several minibuses and private vehicles are seen in the streets every day, purportedly going unnoticed by the ranks of the force. Those vehicles are alleged to be owned by members of the Ghana Police Force. I think I'm going to record as to how many buses are owned by members of the Ghana Police Force. <laughs> I'm not aware how many minibuses are owned by the Ghana Police Force, save and except for those that we have at the transport workshop. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The opposition party has confidence in a public procurement commission. As such, the opposition leader vowed to continue supplying the commission with information about the alleged wrongdoings of the government. Here are the details. Opposition leader Barra Jagdio said his party will continue to maintain confidence in the public procurement commission. The party believes the commission will continue its duty of professionalism on all levels. As such, the PPP has pledged to continue supplying the commission with information of negligence. This will be done to expose alleged corruption in the Granger led administration. That we may have re reservations about the pace with which the PPPC does its work. And we may not agree on every finding. But we will continue to work with this body. We will continue to, to supply information to the PPC to expose the serious acts of corruption taking place in Guyana. On the other hand, the party would like to see a tour investigation conducted on GCOM and the Durban Park project. The party believes the police should probe the matters as grave discrepancies have been unearthed from the Auditor General report. In the report, it was pointed out that financial records for the Durban Park project were not provided, while contracts were awarded to the highest bid for purchasing equipment in the case of GCOM. On November 15, Nickel John reported the Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarain reiterating that rogue cops will not be part of the Guyana Police Force. He said once he's at the helm of the force, those individual actions will be booted. Nikhil Jandu with the details. Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarain said rogue cops will not be tolerated in the Ghana Police Force. He made the comments at the launching of the force's annual end-of-year strategy. Ramnarain said those ranks who were engaged in accidents and other illegal activities were dismissed from the force. you either on the side of law and order or on the, you want to go on the other side, fine, that's it. But you cannot be sitting on the fence. I will not permit you. The senior administration of the force does not accept and will not condone you sitting on the fence. You cannot be borderline. The acting top cop believes that a policeman or woman cannot be in the force and committing illegal activities. Those individuals will have to take a side before it is too late, affirms Ram Narayan. You cannot be driving a vehicle, with a private ve your private vehicle, without fitness, without insurance, drunk driving, and expect to remain a member of the force. No, you have to go. You're charging the member of the public who you swore to protect. And you are doing nothing different. You're doing the same thing. And you wear a uniform. You have to go. He added that if current members of the force do not want to be the enforcers of the law, then others are willing to join the force. The Guyana Police Force did not have a long line waiting to enlist five years ago. Today, through the grace of God and through public trust and other initiatives, we have a long line waiting out there. So when you slip up, this is not a case of three, three strikes as we learn in certain um, philosophies and teachings and so on, three strikes. We can, I'm not going to wait on three strikes. As long as I'm there, that is the way forward for the force. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. 
The opposition party is questioning the integrity of Natural Resources Minister Rafael Trotman as the party continues to grumble over the selection of a GCAM chairman. The opposition party continues to question the integrity of Minister of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman. This emanated from his involvement in the selection process of a chairman for the Guyana Elections Commission. As such, the alliance for change should not be trusted as it shows how opportunistic they are, affirms the opposition leader, Barrett Joglio. We've seen the AFC trying to have it both ways as per usual. So they're for something one day and then against it the next day. While Trotman might have been acting in the absence of the Attorney General, Jagdeo said he was not briefed on the development. According to him, Trotman was playing on both sides of the coin by demonstrating for and against the unilateral selection. Jagdeo claimed he knew prior to the meetings he had with President David Granger that he would have unilaterally appointed a chairman. And the AFC can't exclude themselves totally. Why did Trotman not say to the President, Mr. President, you're going to be deemed untrustworthy. You're not keeping your word because I sat with the opposition on this matter and we drafted something, a, a joint approach that we agreed to at the meeting where I, I was at. And that approach, your, your current action is in direct contradiction to that commitment that you gave Guyana and, and to the leader of the opposition. The statement, which was released in June, says in part that it was agreed that the high-level team would be assembled representing both sides should a third list of nominees be unacceptable to the president. The team would have been responsible to work on modalities to bring a solution to the matter. However, the president provided a justification for not using this route following the swearing of retired Justice James Patterson. At one stage, I even considered that... Uh, we could have approached it differently, but I do not have the authority to go outside of the Constitution to um, initiate any sort of bipartisan search. It is entirely the, the leader of the opposition's uh, responsibility, and it would be um, unconstitutional for me to uh, intrude in that process. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. On a brighter note, Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich has confirmed that talks and exchange of information has been ongoing with the opposition on the Border Commission. That commission was established to have dialogue with all stakeholders to resolve the border controversies. Nikhil John Lu tells us more. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said the mixed border commission is of concern to the government to have all stakeholders involved in the process. Minister Greenwich noted that, as a matter of principle, the country's opposition party and interest groups would be involved in the Border Commission. He noted too that, from the last meeting which was held in New York, the team was made up of several stakeholders. That is what we tried to do, and as regards the opposition specifically, our wish and, and the way we are operating at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is notwithstanding the problems um, encountered or expressed by the concerns expressed by the leader of the opposition to keep them abreast of what is going on. We try to do that as far as possible. Minister Greenwich further added that whenever the leader of the opposition requests information from the ministry, it is provided to them. He said they do acknowledge it also whenever information is passed on. Meantime, opposition leader Bar Jagdio had indicated last month that they will not be cooperating with the government. However, on matters of national importance, the opposition will take part as they represent a large percentage of the country's population. Minister Greenwich reiterated that Guyana has recommitted itself to the good offices process as was indicated by the UN Secretary General's correspondence. So whatever you may think is not happening and whatever you in the public may not see, the government has an obligation in its own interest to follow the process up to the point when the Secretary General says, we finish reviewing and this is our uh, decision. Until such time, it would be, I think, 
uh, dangerous, let me use a, a strong a term as that, to just abandon the process. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Ghanish River Corporation is continuing to blame the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union for its inability to achieve their sugar production target. However, the union is shrugging off the blame being casted on its shoulders. Here's more. General Secretary of Gao C. Paul Narain said, the sugar company has time and again set the stage to place blame on its workers and the union. C. Paul said those actions were a surly attempt to give the corporation's hierarchy cover for what would be the poorest production since 1990. While the union has the responsibility to protect and promote, they have no intention of frustrating Gaisuko's objective of form Narain. Admitting they will not avoid responsibilities, no amount of concussions will force them to change the position the union maintains. On the other hand, the sugar company has been seeing a low turnout of workers for the ongoing second crop. This, Gaisuku said, is a result of the union attempting to frustrate them and the workers. However, Gaisuku remains optimistic in achieving the targeted sugar production for the second crop. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The police corporal, who has been fingered in a high profile murder case, has turned himself into investigators. The corporal says he's ready to defend his name. Police Corporal Darwin Eastman has turned himself in at the Bergdam Police Station on Thursday afternoon. Eastman told the newsroom that he was not aware of being wanted by the police in connection with the alleged execution of businessman Godfrey Scipio. The businessman was executed during a robbery on October 12, 2017. Eastman explained that on Wednesday, he reported for duty and went to court in relation to a narcotic case. He claimed that the prime suspect, Aubrey Bob, has had several brushes with law enforcement officers. The said suspect, I have arrested that individual three times. Once he was arrested for a robbery, which he came out in July of this year. Apart from that robbery, I arrested him sometime recent, before that murder allegedly took place, for a incident which they alleged that he discharged a loaded firearm on the seawalls and also I played a part in effecting the arrest for him on the night in question that he was arrested for the Saga murder. So this mere allegation that this mere article that I've read, I'm totally innocent of it. The police corporate believes that someone may be trying to tarnish his character and that may have something to do with my professionalism and the manner in which I go about doing my, my duties. If, whenever my duty calls, whoever it calls for me to arrest, I arrest. The day in question that Saga was murdered, I was at court giving evidence in a narcotics matter. Today also I have another matter before the court that I should have been at court for, that is a firearm matter in relation to a seasoned criminal who in the past would have had over a dozen robbery charges. And to date for the time that the short time that I have seen myself in the Guyana Police Force, I've seen myself as one of the most successful police within that short time when it comes to effecting arrests and to and conducting and executing of my duties. Corporal Eastman said he is ready to have a confrontation with the suspect to clear his name. I am ready for a confrontation with him. 100% I am innocent. Businessman Sapia was killed after he exited a popular hotel with a female in the Kitty area. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The government announced earlier that three more sugar estates will be closed at the end of this year, as it is unfeasible to have them operating at a loss. However, the government is flip-flopping on its decision, with the closure of the estates in 2017 unlikely, according to the Minister of State. Here are the details. The government had announced in the National Assembly that Rose Hall, Skelton and Enmore Sugar Estates will be permanently closed in December as the sugar company continues to operate at a loss. This means that only three estates will remain in operation 
iFlot, Albion and Blairmont. However, the government is seemingly somersaulting on its decision. According to the Minister of State Joseph Harmon, there is still ongoing work at the Special Purpose Unit, which may very well roll over into the new year. It is due to this that the Minister of State announced that the closure of sugar estates may not go as planned. He said it is not right to bring sugar production to an end in those communities with nothing to substitute. While I believe a date has been set for these things, um, that I don't believe that having regard to everything that is taking place, that we may be able to reach that deadline. And so it may very well go into 2018. The, uh, the issue with respect to the closure. On a positive note, the government has pledged its commitment to pay sugar workers their servants' packages. The benefit or the welfare of the workers is the primary consideration of this administration. And we will not see workers put on the breadline in that manner without some recourse. All proposals for the purchasing of the Enmore estate will be facilitated through a process by the Special Purpose Unit on the NACIL. After being analyzed, a response will be given to those who submitted proposals, explained the Minister of State. Meanwhile, before there can be any process in the sale of Skeldon estate, evaluations, surveys and inventorying has to be completed, which is presently ongoing. Allegations have been time and again made about suspects being tortured by the police to sign confession statements. That perception was laid to rest by head of the Criminal Investigation Department, Paul Williams. Here's more from Nikhil Jond. Acting Crime Chief Paul Williams said, under his watch, no suspect who goes to the Criminal Investigation Department for questioning is tortured. Williams affirmed that, no individual will be beaten by investigators. We have what it takes. I have capable and competent people who can do good interviewing and investigation. So there's nowhere any need for us to move to the extreme where we'll have to get physical or to extort any type of information from any person. The acting crime chief said there is no report of anyone being tortured while assuring that such incidents will not happen. He noted that no magistrate has ordered any investigation of alleged torture from prisoners. Williams said, based on the training provided by the Justice Education Society out of Canada, investigations are now being conducted on the surveillance cameras. We are now conducting our interviews under cameras. So even the taking of caution statements, they are being taken on the cameras. So at the end of it, if people want to deny the credibility and also the weight and the authenticity of those confessions, the camera is there to show because everything is being done consistently together. In 2009, several suspects were tortured to sign confession statements. One such individual was a 15-year-old who was one of three persons detained for an alleged murder. Amnesty International Deputy Director for the Americas Program Kerry Howard had noted that the Ghana police force appalling acts of brutality must not go unpunished. Howard had said that there must be a full investigation into how officers were allowed to blatantly flout Guyanese and international laws by refusing access to family, lawyers and medical treatment for several days. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates We Can Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us on Monday, November 20 at 7 hours 30 for another edition of MTV's News Update. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching.